I have a really strong um, repulsion against uh, sounds that try and grab my attention. So I have no sounds on my phone. My phone never rings. Yep, same. Um, and then I also, uh, you know, if I have a microwave, I, I figure out a way to turn that sound off. I want no electronic sounds trying to grab my attention because my hypothesis is your attention is the most valuable thing you own because it's yeah. the it's your bandwidth for for changing the world. And so if you allow these things to grab your attention, yeah. you're giving away the most valuable thing you have, more valuable than money because it's the present moment. And uh, so I also gave up Twitter for for Sober October, and that was nice. good. I had no idea how much of my attention I was just handing over to that system. Yes, I need to. Yeah, I, I found myself getting too often, on, even though it's. I think it's less than average, but still it's... Um, more than I want on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Now that I I don't have the email on the app on the on the cell phone, it's like you know it's you just go looking for something else for sure. Just addictive, right? And I've tried to uh, you know when you can screen time screen time, I guess you, you can block those and it works okay. But yeah, you you always allow more time, which is ridiculous. And also when you actually need it, let's say if you're doing a Instagram live or whatever you're doing, then the thing shuts on yourself. It's not that's not good. It's what do you different. think of Instagram? Instagram is huge in South America and not as huge in North America. Um, I like it. I think it's a little younger generation than um, than Facebook. When I say I like it, I like it as, a, again, I try to produce more content than I actually consume on, on those social media. And I think you and I talked about it, uh, about that. Um, so as a, as a media, I I. I think it's it's fine. I don't use Facebook a lot. Twitter, I don't use a lot. Uh, but we, we do publish on those as well. Uh, when it comes to social media, I guess Instagram is probably the one that I use and then uh, LinkedIn a little bit as well. Instagram, I'm like hyper wary of because it's this it's allowing you to have this visual, um, yeah. you know, oh, like yeah. uh, and, and so it, and like the fact that the way that Instagram works is that it just keeps showing you the things that get you to stop oh. scrolling. So of course, like a beautiful woman, I'm going to slow down or like <laughs> something chaotic, I'm going to slow down. And then all of a sudden, before I know it, I have an exploration feed that is just like, uh, you know, exactly the things that visually would draw my attention in. And yet wow. I get nothing back for it. It's not like I, it's not like I'm admiring a Monet and it, and it's making me think more deeply about it. It's just one of those things where you're like getting mesmerized by it. Yes, that's, that's exactly right. It's addictive. And again, that's why that Netflix deal is good because it shows you the, all the guys behind it and they are scared of, of it and agree. I mean, it is addictive and something probably should stop looking at. I try, yeah, I try to be selective too. I mean, try to follow the people that are putting some good content that I learn from some ideas when it comes to digital marketing or whatever else, but it's always tough. It's a tough one. You know, it's interesting to think about uh, the people that put out content because I find that there are people that I need at certain times in my life and then you kind of move past it. And mm -hmm. it's a weird thing about, uh, you know, the YouTube uh, people of the world. They're, they're, I talked about that guy, Wes Watson. I really, really liked what he was doing because he was like yelling at you that you needed to get down and do your burpees and get that workout in and but then I got to a point where I had transcended that. I didn't need a guy yelling at me. And I would say the same thing about somebody like David Goggins or Jocko or Jordan Peterson. Yeah. And so we kind of have this, you know, we, we get a chance to understand their point of view. Mm -hmm. You move past it and you keep going. But it makes the world feel, um, yeah, transient in, in, a, in, a, in a deep way. In particular, for a guy that's trying to create content, how do you avoid becoming the the person, the wave that people will crash over and then keep moving on from. Yeah, that's a great one. I have, I never thought about that. Um, yeah, just our goal when it comes to content is to pr try to get the best content we can. But it's, yeah, it's a tough one, right? When, oh, as you said, I think people evolve, you know, and it's something interesting that you said, you, you mentioned a few names that, that I like and I've either followed as well, like um, Jordan Peterson and others and, Super cool. I love to have these fake mentors that you can learn from and uh, you are brass friends with them. They don't know you. You know, it's, 
I, it's, I love it. And sometimes people don't give value to it. For example, if for you to get, to have a one-on-one call with a guy that you like it a lot, let's call Elon Musk. I like Elon Musk a lot. So if I could have a one-on-one call with him, I'd sit and I learn and I'd take notes, right? But just because it's free and available on YouTube, you don't, you're not very interested on in that. Well, you, you know? and I have a similarity, right? Like uh, you reached out to me after finding me on YouTube, but like Jordan Peterson, he's not a fake mentor to me. I flew up to Toronto and went and met what? him before he no. became a big, huge deal. And I would say when I find somebody on social media that I think is doing something interesting, mm-hmm. I say, hey, they are trying to create a gravity well. Their goal, maybe it's to have you know fame and fortune, or maybe it's just that they want to be, they want to encounter somebody that they couldn't encounter just by going and looking on their own. So I have always had that mentality and it has netted me um, really strong friendships with interesting people because I try not to allow my mind to put them on a pedestal Mm -hmm. and instead say, this person wants me to reach out to them because I have something to say that they're going to find interesting just in the same way that you reached out to me. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you met uh, Jordan Peterson. I mean, he is a bright guy, uh, not well understood as well. Right. Um, that's cool. And and going after, right. I think Tim Ferriss talk about in, in his, one of his books. And, and also when he gave some class on Princeton, Princeton, he, he says that, yeah, go, go after some famous people and you're going to be surprised. Yeah. And it's interesting that I find that most famous people, they don't really want the sheen of being famous. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a guy named uh, Matt Ridley, who's Lord Ridley. He's a member of the House of Lords. He's written these books on evolution and capitalism. Cool. He's a fascinating guy. And I had a chance to go and meet him. And the the sense of treating him with reverence, like he kind of yeah. like rebuked yeah. me. Like he was yeah. a little bit like, hey, man, let's just have a regular conversation yeah. as opposed to you putting me on a pedestal. And I had to be like, yeah, but you're Lord Ridley. <laughs> but at the end of the day, he's a regular guy that would rather be thought, I think, would rather be thought of as a guy that's d- putting things out into the world, getting things done, wanting to talk about ideas rather than being revered. Yeah, I love it. I love it. That's that's the ultimate goal, you know, and, and qu- when it comes back to, to, to the business we are running and other things, our goal is just to create positive impact. That's, we're really addict, addicted to that, you know, helping if we can help people, we love that. That's really what drives us, you know. That's really- Thanks for checking out this podcast short. If you like this interview, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and hit that bell so you always get notified about this podcast. And if you're really interested in conversations like this, you may want to consider joining the Articulate Ventures Network. To find out more, go to network.articulate.ventures.